Hey YouTube, how you doing? It's Ali here, back with another nature video. So, I recently levelled up, apparently, with my competency in the outdoors and became a fully BMC validated mountain leader. Ha <laughs> ha yay! So, throughout the assessment week, as you as the week goes on you can see how different candidates have various strengths and weaknesses and for this video i thought i would talk about one of the assessment elements flora and fauna so i thought i'd just choose five super common easy peasy plants that you find in the lake district for you to remember and some facts for you to remember with each plant. So when you get asked to endow the group with some planty wisdom, you can wow everyone. So let's get to it. Um, yeah. So as you've been wandering around the mountains, you may have seen lots of little white blobby flowers amongst the moor grass. This is heath bed straw. It has four petals and looks like this, and this, and this, and it's this big, and this, 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 heath bed straw. So I couldn't find that much information about this plant. Um, the one thing I did find is that it is apparently, well, it is an essential spray. The plant is being sold as an, as an essential, as an essential spray and it's supposed to help you enter a calm meditative state and generally help you chill out. As with most things on the intranet, there's absolutely no science behind this. But there you go, it is sometimes used as a calming essence. Heath bed straw. Plant number two. Oh, I love this plant. It's mountain thyme. It looks like this. And this, when it's blooming, you can see the little flowers. And this. And the leaves look like this. And... When you do find it, just smell it and you'll you'll know. Yeah, so the fact about this, obviously, is it is edible. Both the leaves and the flowers, you can do all sorts with it. Um, yeah, next time you're out, go and pick some and make some tea, try it and put it in with your soups. Um, yeah, mountain time. And plant number three is over there. What is it? What could it be? Let's see. Ah, oh, it's sundew. These are so pretty. They kind of look like Venus flytraps, right? Well, similar principle because the fun fact about sundews, these guys, is that they're covered in sticky globules which attract insects, particularly midges, and these clever guys wrap the leaf around the insect once caught and ingest them. Oh, they're so pretty. Um, easy name to remember because they look like mini suns and are covered in dew, right? Um, yeah, so plant number four. As you've been hiking in the lakes, you will have seen it absolutely everywhere. And for a long time, I was tormented. I was plagued with not knowing what this plant was. <laughs> I was trying to work out what it could be and there were about four potential flowers that were yellow and looked really similar and I just was not sure. But my torment came to a state of alleviation across the nation when I found out that it was called Tormentil. Um, this is how big it is. You can see it's got four petals. It looks like this, looks like this. It is absolutely everywhere. Cool. Tormental. In spite of my clever little play on the words, see what I did there. Um, the name uh, dates back, sh back 
actually to the Roman times and in Latin was called tormentum because the root was used to alleviate stomach pains or torments. Now, there's actually a fair bit of evidence out there to suggest that brewing and drinking the root or the rhizome, something I've recently learned, it's like a parallel growing parallel uh not vertical what's the opposite of vertical per, per perpendicular sideways sideways growing roots rhizome kind of looks like mini potatoes when you dig it up um and i had a play digging it up and I haven't actually tried any yet apparently it tastes rank but there is a fair bit of evidence to suggest that it can help with indigestion, diarrhea, colitis and blood fluxes. So there you have it. And it is used in the USA in diorolite particularly, but it hasn't been used here in the UK in recent medicinal practices. Plant number five. This is ribwort plantain. It looks like this and this on this but it can vary in appearance um look for the white little speckly antennae sticking out and you know you're onto a winner but they also often later in the season these these leave these go that's very um unhelpful uh they so they can also not have them yeah you, you'll get used to identifying once you've seen one or two um Ribwort plantain is edible. They taste pretty good. They've kind of got a nutty, bitter, mushroomy taste. You could totally stick it on a pizza and ugh, it would it would work. Trust me. You can eat the leaves and stem also, but they are just a bit bitter. Don't taste that great. Um, so you can remember this name. I remembered it because you have the white spotty bits and it's a bit like like the white is like bone like rib and it's like a blob so it's like a rib wart yeah get it huh well you will remember that now trust me this plant uh, is an antihistamine so if you suffer from allergies asthma and or f hay fever fay fever <laughs> load up your plate with rib wart buffet you'll be in for a trait or don't because you may have an allergic reaction but I will leave that up to you disclaimer so yeah I would recommend consulting your local plumber pest control or police station before eating these plants to ensure you have identified the correct one and to ensure you don't sue my video. Thanks for watching and happy identifying. <laughs>